Um, yes. Well, for, for the record, uh, this meeting is now beginning at uh, 9.04. And if I can have everyone on the call identify themselves one at a time, please. Bob Barrio. David Cameron Foster. Champlin. David Foster. Mike Rosario. John Higgins. Janita Hamill, Consumer Protection. Hamill Brown, Consumer Protection. Paulette Annan, um, Consumer Protection. Julia Avalone, Consumer Protection. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a work in progress, and I would rather be having a meeting, but we have to do what we have to do. Uh, so, the minutes of the previous meeting, the board will review the draft minutes from the February 20th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at that? Uh, yeah. Chuck well, Higgins, I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Okay. And second by Mike. Um, one thing that I um, want to just mention here, there was an appearance by uh, Adam Scalina from COSAC and Selena LLC. Um, that particular thing is more a Department of Labor or a legal licensing, a legal law issue for the, the um, uh, government to handle. Um, they want to do something, they would have to go through the normal process. I don't think we could start that. We can assist if needs to be. Uh, anybody have any other concerns about that? No. Oh. Okay, uh, the <clears throat> old decision Mark Lee was handled. Okay, any other questions, concerns about the minutes? Need a motion, please? You've had a motion and it's been seconded, Bob. All right, thank you, Cammy, for straightening me out. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, comments or concerns of any person's presence today? Anybody have con issues, questions? Uh, for DCP, does anybody have a clue of when you may be going back to the office or is that still in limbo? Uh, as far as investigations, we are Pamela Brown, by the way, Director of Investigations. Uh, we are out in the field. We've got our PPE now. We'll be doing inspections based on uh, exigent circumstances. So we're going to weigh out uh, the inspections that we are conducting because, of course, we want to keep our staff safe. We're doing we're observing certain job sites and we notice a lot of people a lot of companies are not enforcing the mass policy so we want to make sure that we have uh, put up every precaution for our inspectors as they're out in the field but we are back um, in, in business okay. that answers your question pamela just so you know 200 atlantic street in stanford you got a company there right flow from new york you got dozens and dozens of people that don't have a license or even registered apprentices. Okay, would you be able to submit a, a complaint for us, please? So we can look into that? Yeah, is there an actual complaint form? How do you want me to handle it? Uh, yes, we have online complaints. So if you go online, click file a complaint, uh, you can fill out all the information. We just make sure you please provide us with the correct address, as much detail as possible that you have and then submit it. There's also an anonymous complaint feature, which I demonstrated to most of the boards uh, last year. So if you need a refresher, please reach out to me and I, I can show you how to do that. Uh, I have no problem having my name on it. Sure, then file a complaint, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Yep, thanks. As far as legal goes and a lot of the other office staff, um, most people have been uh, authorized to do telework through the end of the year and not only authorized to do so, but recommended to do so. That unless our, our directive at this point from the Department of Administrative Services and Public Health has been to keep people out of the office. So public are not allowed, visitors are not allowed at all. Um, and 
I, I am only authorized to allow my staff into the office if needed for something. Um, so I would expect that no board meetings would be happening in our office through the end of the calendar year. And then we're gonna have to see how things go after that. Um, you know, it's interesting. Some of the boards have been saying, like we had a board of accountancy meeting on what, Tuesday, I believe it was. Um, and they, their stance on this was that they hope they never actually have to come in here ever again, that they are loving doing this remotely. Um, and then there are some other boards, like I believe it was electrical a few weeks ago. They're like, can we come in now? Now can we come in? And so I think it's going to be a difference of just who the board members are and their preferences of how they proceed forward. But um, most likely you're going to see options arise over time that if there is a board that really enjoys doing this remotely and it's a more efficient use of their time, then I would anticipate that this is going to be an option that would continue past the pandemic. Okay, uh, how, there is, you can't read between the lines when you're doing a Zoom meeting sometimes and how do you handle that with hearings? So in terms of hearings, we are telling people that, um, so we, it's like a soft mandate. So we are telling people that they're going to have to sign in through Teams and Teams very similar to Zoom um, is a video conferencing service. So, you know, even like I'm just, I don't know why I don't have my uh, video on. Here, I can turn it on and sometimes it honestly it's just that I forget to turn the video on but you know what one, one of the things we are saying that you're right it is being able to see someone is very different it's very useful so um, in the event that we can have people show up and so we can read their expressions that's going to be ideal however um, in the event that someone is not going to or doesn't have that capacity for some reason and that they are only showing up um, either through Teams, but without the video service, or they're only showing up telephonically, that that would qualify for a hearing that, that is gonna be an acceptable mode of appearing at an administrative hearing, that this is something that has been backed up by the AG's office. We had a lot of conversations about this because at first I was very uncomfortable. With it. I was very uncomfortable with the idea of saying, you can just call in. Um, and then not only from speaking to my fellow legal directors and other agencies that I realized there were a number of credentials that they may be revoking or suspending through this, but everything through a termination of parental rights. Um, so people are getting their kids taken away from them forever legally by telephone hearings. Um, there are a lot of hearings that are happening by telephone that I never expected they would be. Um, again, for us, we are pushing video, video. I want to see you when you're going to be presenting to us. Um, and also even little things, we had an arbitration the other day where a woman didn't show up. Uh, she just, she had called in and then she said, oh wait, hold on, I, you know, hold on, I have to go get a document. And she disappeared for, you know, we couldn't hear her for about a minute or two. And if you had video, like it would have been interesting to see what was happening. Was she conversing with someone else on the phone? Was she really looking for a document? Um, you know, what was actually happening during that time? Because typically during a hearing, people don't just say, hold on a second, I've got something to do for a minute. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, is, it is a new world, I'll, I'll give you that. It, it's a new world and is it gonna be the hook to have a case overturned? So no, that is a lot of, that's what we've been, that's what we started dealing with up front very early, is that pursuant to statute, there's no requirement for an in-person hearing. And when you're talking about whether or not they have their due process, all of the procedures that we're doing up prior to the hearing related to providing notice, providing access to the forum are all the same. Now, when you come to the hearing, you're actually still getting the board members that are all there, that are all present. We have to make sure, obviously, there's, there's a certain number that there's a form to be able to, to hear the case or designate a hearing officer. Um, 
But then when it comes to it, then the person is going to have access to that forum. Now, if for some reason, let's say, you know, they are in, the respondents in the hills of Salisbury, and they're in the middle of testifying as to what occurred, they suddenly drop off of the call. Um, what we did do is say, okay, we're gonna have IT, we have a helpline that IT is gonna man during all of the hearings consistently. Someone's gonna be sitting at their computer and at their phone waiting for anything to happen. Um, and in the event that does happen, so again, they drop off teams, they can't log back in for whatever reason, they can call into that number and say, I'm having technical difficulties. That IT person will come in and say, your respondent can't have access. At that point, we would have to suspend the hearing and we'd have to continue it for another day. Because, I mean, it's unrealistic to say, you know, we are, I think it was, four, it was 42 or 44 hearings that when we started getting back up and running and saying, we're gonna start scheduling the remote hearings again, there was a backlog of, I don't, again, I don't remember if it was 42 or 44, but a, a lot of hearings needed to be scheduled. There's no way that I believe that 44 hearings are gonna be conducted without a technical glitch. Like I just, it's improbable at best. Um, so we're preparing for all those contingencies the best way we can. Well, sounds like a lot of fun because it's a whole new world. <laughs> Fun is one way to describe it. Well, <laughs> it is. I mean, <laughs> me, me personally, I like it because I've had some meetings that should last two to three hours normally in person, and they're done in 45 minutes. I've noticed the same. <laughs> yeah, I, me personally, I think it's awesome. I mean, I miss the interaction with being there, people, but, you know, for the time being, I have no problem with it. I'll do it for the next year. Actually, actually Bob, you might see me more. <laughs> well, as we would go through some of the hearings, I remember one of my key words, brevity. Stuck, yes, I do, I do remember, remember that. Let, let's go. Uh, any, uh, anybody else have any uh, questions or concerns? Thank you for the update, Julianne. Um, we also have uh, the DCP Investigative Division Complaint Status Report. Did you guys all get those? Yep. Yep. Uh, Pam, are you going to address that? Actually, I am going to have to leave the meeting, and Janita is going to stay behind to uh, do the presentation for investigation. Oh, so Janita be the new attorney? No. <laughs> All right, take care. I'm not getting arrested for doing uh, <laughs> legal work without a license. Thanks, Pamela. Thank you. Go ahead, Janita. Um. You all have the uh, report. What I did, Mr. Chairman, was because I couldn't remember our last hearing, our last meeting date, I went from January 1st of 2020 to May 31st of 2020 on the report. And we have 21 files that are, um, open and we had 25 files that were closed and in that time $9,500 were taken in and civil penalties with assurances of voluntary compliance on those uh, cases. All right, doesn't look like there's too many repeat offenders as we've gone through this. Yeah, no and, and, and Mr. Chairman to, to that point um, when there are repeat offenders, as I look and assign new complaints, I am putting that in my uh, initial case review notes to the investigator, the inspector, that this person has priors and how many I'm aware of, and that will temper what happens. So repeat offenders were tending more towards uh, reports to legal for administrative hearing action. Okay, sounds good. Anybody have any other questions about the report? Okay, great. Um, we did have a hearing, uh, Julianne, and I printed off all of the uh, cases and the decisions that you made. Um, this was... Um, 
I think, uh, John, you were a little worked up with Mr. Uh, Alfred Johnson. And um, actually we all were. Um, all of the decisions have been forwarded to me. Um, and I think it's pretty much in line with what happened. Um, I appreciate Julianne that you're getting us to this. The, uh, the last one languished a little too long. We did forward our final decision to Mr. Lee, I believe. Um, Julianne, how much money did we find, Mr. Johnson, in total? Any idea? Or? Um, let me pull that up really quickly. Um, I While we're waiting, um, Tom Casey has joined us. Tom, can you hear us? Pardon? Tom Casey has joined us. Oh, hi, Tom. How you doing? Hi, Tom. He's on <laughs> mute. No, well, he, right. He's got, um, he's got himself on mute there. Yeah, I'm, there he is. There he is. I'm deaf, I'm deaf, blind, and muted. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, Just another day at the office. <laughs> So the total amount was $21,500. And revocation of his license, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, gentlemen, what I, uh, what I will do, and I think this should be the correct process, what I will do is sign all of these and get these to you. Do you need just the signature page, Julianne? Yes. If you give me just the signature page, that's fine. And um, what we've had, if you don't have a scanner at home, um, we've actually found that it's worked out really well with people uh, printing out, signing them, and then using one of the scanning apps, um, which are miraculously good. I've been using them on my, from my phone as well uh, to email those over to us. And then we can attach them to the entire PDF and uh, then get the commissioner assigned. And then we will send out through certified mail through our office, the final decision, along with a cover letter to these folks that explains yes. to them their appeal rights and their reconsideration rights if they want to contest, not they, if he wants to contest. Okay, um, I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll scan these and email them back to you and I'll do them, um, I'll put on the last page, cause I didn't see it, the case number. Is that okay? Sure, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I think that'd be fine because you're right. There, there is not a specific case number on them. I think, and some of them might be the same number of pages. So. Yeah, I know. Yep. You, okay. You, you got a four. You got yep. two fours. A five. Two fives. So we got three okay. fours and two fives. So. All right. I'll take them and I'll just make sure that that way is done. Anybody that'd have be any? Anybody have any issues or concerns about those? So just so um, everyone knows, these are just drafted based on the recordings from the meeting, um, the notes that were taken as long as, and as well as the initial complaint that was filed by the administrative complaint by the Department of Consumer Protection. So um, it's just a memorialization of the of the board hearing, you know, both minutes and recording that was done by one of our attorneys. Okay. Um, anybody questions on that? Concerns? I'm right. just going to say, uh, Bob, that I wasn't a part of the hearing, and I'm glad the board uh, did what they did. I, I temporarily had him on probation with me uh, a couple years ago, and 
uh, he is not an honorable person. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it, I don't mean if you want to do something really stupid when, when you start fleecing people and especially people that are trusting you in the middle of winter, it's not a good feeling. A lot of anxiety. So you get what you deserve. Yep. Um, any new business that anybody wants to discuss? <clears throat> Other than I'd like to go back to the old way we were doing things. Anything else? Correspondence, do we have any of that? No, we do not. Okay, so. That being hey, I, I, question I had, I know, um, I saw an email come through the other day, but what is the anticipation with um, PSI opening for testing and kind of how are they extending or forgiving deadlines and what does that look like? So anyone whose credential was going to expire between March Gosh, I reviewed this email a thousand times. Um, I want to say it was March 16th. Was it March 10th? Right in that ballpark. We'll, we'll take your word for it. You're an attorney. It was, Go ahead. Okay, it was early March. I can't remember the exact date, but uh, so it was between March and then um, it's, uh, I believe it's July 1st. I'm pulling it up as we're doing this. Uh, 2021. Here we go. Now I've got it in front of you, so I can give you the real dates. So March 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021, the, they now have until July 1st to be able to complete their testing. Uh, originally, they had done a 90-day extension, but then, and then they were considering doing another 90-day extension, which is going to bring people in the fall, into the fall to be able to take their tests. But what we found is that there just, there were, considering the backlog and then the amount of new people that needed to take the test, it wasn't feasible for everyone to get a slot. PSI just couldn't process that many applications or process that many examinations. So what we looked at is that this, so this affected the occupational trades, everyone under chapter 393, the electronic TV radio uh, licensees, well drilling, real estate, real estate appraisers. Um, and so for all of those different credential types, we said that you have a little bit more, so you have a year to be able to take all of these and you won't be penalized. Um, there'll be no issues if you have paid already, because some of these people have paid already, that that payment will extend out and it's going to be good through July 1st, 2021. Um, PSI is going to be honoring those. One of the things we have been pushing, because part of the problem that in addition to the timeliness of being able to take the exam prior to any expiration date that was previously imposed is that is this idea of being able to reach them and just schedule these dates. So we've emphasized strongly with PSI that they have to have people that are actively monitoring on a consistent basis the email address they provided in that email um, to licensees that they're going to help get these things scheduled and that they have enough manpower at PSI to be able to respond to all these requests. Um, so they've committed to us that they do. If you guys hear otherwise, if you hear that your, you know, colleagues or even you know that other people you know are having trouble scheduling tests or getting responses still, then definitely let us know because you know we have assurances that they are they're working on this because otherwise we were hearing from people they're like, well, I emailed them a month ago. I emailed them six times over the last month. I, you know, I've been calling and not getting an answer, all of this stuff. And it's created a lot of anxiety in the marketplace with a lot of, with various types of licensees. So um, hopefully this is, we've, we've moved this along and um, we we're, we're going to start getting better responses. Okay. <clears throat> um, so PSI now is open again, correct? Yeah, so PSI is open, so you can start scheduling. Um, I believe, Richard, you can start scheduling online, I believe, correct? Uh, yes, yes, you can. And there, there are only there are five, five locations in Massachusetts, two locations in Connecticut, and there's a few over the line in New York. Well, there's 15 over in New York. So, you know, a lot of people in Fairfield County would just go over to New York for or Pennsylvania or New Jersey, whatever is convenient for them, traffic-wise, 
and then and then the five locations in Mass, and we have two in Connecticut, West Hartford, and Milford. But you have to remember, every one of these locations has the mandate for social distancing. So the the cubicle spaces that they use, you're only using every other one. So a test center that might have 28 spots in it, they can only test 14 people at once right now. And they're they're looking in to see if, if people keep their masks on, whether or not they can um, do additional exams and, and shorten the distance between the people. So they're working that out with uh, Department of Economic and Community Development. Okay. Um, and it's not only uh, our industry. Uh, one of my uh, guys has a wife who finished up a nursing program and she had to go to Washington to go take the test. Her parents live there, so she flew out and had a test done in two days. So it's uh, interesting going on. Um, any other comments or concerns about the PSI? Uh, all right. I would say that I can adjourn the meeting at this time, and it appears that I guess our next meeting would be August 13th, and I would assume that it would be on a Zoom one. Right. Yes. All right. And uh, Karen and Richard and Department of Consumer Protection, thank you for all your help trying to put all this together. A great job. Um, do miss not being in the uh, DCP offices to uh, be able to banter and discuss and carry on, but this is what we have. Yeah. To all of you, be safe. And we note that we are adjourning the meeting at uh, 931. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Be healthy. Yeah, be safe. Bye-bye.